Uh, thanks and welcome back to the channel. This is kind of part two from the Swiper JS Ion Slides video that I did quickly last week because I saw a couple of questions being asked about it. Saw some other interesting questions this week, specifically about how to trigger changing the slides from outside of the slide component. Um, and I also saw a question about how do you emit events um, kind of from the parent to the child as opposed to the child emitting event up to the parent. Um, so what I've done in this uh, application is I've uh, taken the normal slider demo that we've had and I broke it out and created a separate component called my slides. Um, right now it does um, what it did before, but the goal here is to take these buttons that are highlighted and remove the buttons from the actual slide component and move them up into the uh, parent component. And then we're going to use a tool called Tiny Emitter and using that, not tool, but a library. And using that library, we are going to listen for events inside of the slide, and we are going to emit events from outside of the uh, from the outside of the slider, i.e., in the home component or parent component, to actually uh, modify the slides. So this is Tiny Emitter. Um, let's get to it. Once again, please make sure you like and subscribe, and leave notes on um, other things you'd like to see. Let's get to the code. Okay, let's get to the code. We're going to start off first by adding this library called Tiny Emitter. Um, it is actually one of the recommended libraries for emitting events. If you see the View 3 documentation, the old way of creating a uh, event bus using um, default view in Vue.js is no longer supported, so they recommended that you use libraries like this. So that's what I've done. So the approach that I'm using here is that I am going to create a emitter that is specifically tied to my swiper component. So the idea is that when you import the swiper, uh, not swiper, when you import the slider component, you can also import this oh, slides emit isn't really what I wanted. I wanted to call it slider emit, but slides emit will be fine. Um, slides emit. And then you can use that slides emit to actually send events and also listen, uh, listen for events. So we will listen for events inside of my slides component and we will import the slides emitter inside of the parent component to actually um, send events out to the uh, uh, my slides component so that it can respond to those events. So we've now kind of imported everything. We have it set it up. Now let's start to deal with um, making sure we have our options set up properly. I noticed that my code, I was still using the options embedded inside of my slides. Um, since we've set up properties, we're passing in the um, options, and so we don't need options locally anymore. So slide ops are passed in, and we will utilize those. Um, let's check in and make sure everything's working fine. Let's go in and change one of the options that we're passing in. So let's change this initial slide to one. So that means it should start start on the second slide. Let's make sure we rename it properly since it's called slide ops inside of my slide. So we renamed it, let's reset it. And you can see we're starting on the second slide because remember this, these uh, are a zero base index. So let's set it back to zero and now we're on the first slide. Okay, so now slide ops is a property that you can see is getting passed through into my slides. Um, what else have we got here? Also notice that we are passing in the items. So if we go back, you'll see here on the items, I'm passing in slide data as items into my slide and that's what's getting rendered in the application. So, all right, back to the tiny emitter. So what are we gonna do with this guy? So we have the slides emitter that we've created, and the, what we're gonna do here is the idea is to take the buttons out of the slides component and put the buttons inside a parent container or basically any place else. So anywhere I click a button, I can send an event to the slides component and the slides component can listen for that. So that's what we are gonna do here. So now let's go into slides and let's find our buttons and we're going to take the buttons out of our component and we're going to add them to our home component at the top level here so we have our buttons in place and as you can see let's um, make sure we uh, import the proper component inside of my home and uh, remove them from the other ones so now we have our buttons inside of my home component. Let's add a little comment to be nice about it. And so right now we have the slides in place. Now let's get rid of some of these errors that we have here. 
All right, so let's see what are we gonna steal from here. So let's take these um, properties that we're keeping track of if the button should be disabled or enabled or not, because we need them inside of here. Um, this is the, uh, that disable previous button and disable next button. If you're not clear how I use those, please take a look at the first um, episode in this video series um, where I talk about how I'm using those properties to enable and disable the button. Right now I'm just moving them over from the slides component to the home component, which is the parent, because that's where the buttons are. And so we want to be able to enable and disable the buttons based on if we're at the first index or if we're at the last uh, index of slides. And I'm separating out my properties from my methods like I like to do inside my components. So let's clean up the slides view here and remove those. Let's, uh, we don't need those here either. Um, how do I want to get them out? Uh, we'll worry about them later. Let's, what we want to do with the slot, uh, with tiny emitter is when you mount the component, we, we're going to listen for the next slide event and the previous slide event. And you want to definitely make sure you do these inside of on mounted. Um, that's the best place to put them. And then inside this function for now, all we're going to do is we're going to log a console um, to indicate that the event was picked up by the component. So what will happen now is the same one more time when my, my slides component gets the event, it will console log it out. Um, let's comment these guys out because they're causing problems for my build. And now let's see what we get. Um, we have everything set up. And as I said, we're sitting, we're, ugh, we are listening for events here. Let's recompile, um, format and everything looks good. Let's go back to our home view. Now we need to put our slides emitter inside of our home view and we have to actually use that. So what we're going to do is inside of the click event, instead of creating another function, we're going to access the slides emitter that I picked up from my slides. We are going to emit the two events that I spoke about, the next slides event and the previous slide event. We don't need any parameters. Um, uh, the slide component will know what to do with it. It will just move to the next one or the previous one. That's all we needed to do. See, I'm getting some errors, so let's clean up. I hope soon they can fix this. So let's add the ion button component import, and then let's add the component to my components. And let's try and compile again. All right, things look better. All right, let's see, do we get our events? So I click. See, I'm getting duplicate events because the hot reload didn't unmount the other events. So let's clean that up. And <coughs> we should be uh, good to go next time around. So, empty cache, now let's try again. Next, all right, we get what we want. We get the next, we get the next, but notice we still have our button being disabled. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. But just for now, so you can see that I'm getting both events, um, let's reset the default value for um, the previous button to false. So everybody starts out as not enabled. Let's re do a hard reset. And now if I do my next, my next, my previous, my previous. And so you see the events are getting triggered from the home component and are um, getting list, uh, getting picked up by the my slides view component, which is exactly what we want. But um, let's now start to get the code in here. So to do that, we have to make sure we move the on mounted after the next slide function, the previous slide function is declared. Um, so that it can be picked up properly. This is pretty straightforward here. All we really need to do is switch our functions to async since these calls are asynchronous and um, take the existing functions and just drop them in when the uh, event is triggered. Add the await in front as needed and that I think should give us what we want. Let's refresh the page and now let's click our next button. We're getting our events. You're, we're hitting it and you're seeing the slide change event is also getting triggered. Um, but what we don't have yet is we don't have this buttons di disabled and enabled. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of flip things around. What we're going to do now is we're going to have um, my slides emit event and eh, emit two events um, using a swiper API. Uh, because with a swiper API, we can determine if we're at the end of the slides or if we're at the beginning of the slides. And what we're going to do is we're going to emit an event to Anyone who's listening, in this case, it'll be the home component um, to indicate when we're at the end or when we're at the beginning. And what we're going to do with that event is 
we're going to use that event to set those disabled properties that I copied over. So we get the emitter from the context, which gets passed in when you're using the setup approach. And we're going to emit, emit an event at slide end. And that value will be set to true or false. And then we, because we're using TypeScript, um, I'm going to add the types in the back end. But here, as you can see, I'm uh, making the call using the swiper object that I got. And I'm using the is as, is end function to emit the at slide end. And then I'm going to emit an at slide start event. And I'm going to use that is beginning function. So now we can remove the commented out code. We can remove that code to determine the lengths. We're going to let my, we're going to let the swiper API do all this stuff for us. And that looks good. So we're basically going to pass a payload as an object. It's going to have the flag to indicate whether it is true or false. Okay. Now let's hop over to my slides. And here's, this is standard stuff now for Vue.js. So basically we're listening for an at slide end event. And then we are also going to listen for an at slide start event. And these events will get fired off from my slides component. These are custom events that I have created. You can create your own, call them whatever you want. Um, but that's what we got going here. So now I have an on at slide start and an on at slide end function, which will be called when the appropriate event is triggered. And now let's go down inside of our code and let's add our two methods. Let's make sure you put them in the right place. The methods go underneath the methods and the properties go up in the properties. So now we have our at slide start and at slide end. I'm missing a comma, I think. What's going on here? Let's just put the code in. So we have our two functions now. Let's add them at slide end and at, oh, sorry, at end. Let's clean what's going on. Too many red lines, too many red lines. Okay, that looks right, I think. Now we're just actually missing some functionality. So, as I said, when this event is fired, we will get past an object, which is our payload object. Uh, I'm destructuring it because all I care about is actually the value from it. And because we're using TypeScript, uh, I need to set the type. And so what I'm getting is um, the value object, the value property out of the object is what's going to be emitted. And I'm going to, let's reset this to true because you want it to start off as disabled at the beginning. Let me finish up this code here. So I have my value property, which is coming in as my payload. And then now I'm going to set the appropriate disabled previous button or disabled next button based on the payload that gets sent through. So at the slide end, that's the next button. And we set the value that comes in. So if the value is true, we're going to set our local value to true. If the value is false, we're going to set the local value to false. And it looks like things are working as we expected. So that's pretty awesome. We have our previous, we have our next. Our events are working, our buttons will be disabled. So that's some cool stuff. Um, now the next thing is, for those who really want to kind of dig under the covers, is I'm going to show you how in View Tools you can actually see the events that are getting triggered. Um, you can't see the tiny emitter events, but you can see the events that are getting triggered the old fashioned view way. First, let's hop in and um, you can use the uh, find the components to find a specific component. Here, I'm just typing in mine, I'm finding my slides. You can see the properties that are getting passed in. You can see the um, objects that we're using. See, I'm using the my slide ref, so you can kind of see what that has going on. And then you can see the functions that we've created, the uh, next slide, and, and so on and so on. Those anonymous components are the actual slides. The next thing you can do is you can go to this timeline uh, tag. And what the timeline does is this is where you can track the events. It's a little weird UI. But you see that little green dot? When you click that, that will show you the events that got triggered. And so you can see who triggered the event, what the event name was, and what the payload was. And the payload's what's passed inside that param. And so as you can see, as I'm clicking on my buttons, um, events are getting fired. And uh, you can kind of see how I got to squeeze in there to get access to that little green dot to see what the event is. You can kind of see what's going on with the event. Um, this UI isn't as clean as the other one. Hopefully they will um, straighten it out soon. I think this tool's still in beta. 
but you can you can get the general idea of what um what the tool can do i mean i think when the ui is trained out it'll be a pretty powerful tool to use um i like to just show you guys um guys and gals some uh, interesting tools and things that can help help you with your development work um and I, I think that's that's really all i'm trying to show here you can see the last event gets triggered when i click on that dot i look at the values you can see the value is true so that's why the next button got disabled and the previous button is false and so it didn't get set um i think that's uh really it here like i said just trying to show you some pretty cool tools and it's uh time to move on to the end so um thanks a lot for uh checking everything out um i hope you enjoyed the video and i look forward to seeing you next time please make sure you like and subscribe let me know if there's more interesting things that you like to see and i'll be more than happy to do something about it thanks a lot and take care bye now